This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Okay, Bruchim Abayim, welcome Chavirim. It's a pleasure to be your Shachin Tov and to have this chut to, to learn together. Um, the opportunity is really my honor. Tonight's uh, learning should be Le'ilei Nishmat Asher Bas Sivyo, Ben Sivyo, the grandfather of Eddie. What's your last name? Simchayev. the 34th yard site. So on this occasion we wish that Eddie's grandfather began Eden to him and Uchato. Should be Melitz Yosher for his whole family, for good health, happiness, success. Parnasa Berevach, Ad Biyasko Al Tzadak. Also tonight's learning should be Lenishmas, Rebrani's aunt. Seventh month. Seven month yard site of? Dvora Bat Racha. Dvora Bat Racha, Eden to him and Shabim Mitzoy Shara for her whole family, for Simcha Sanachas, for Stavis, good health, and Bracha Vatzlacha, Bekarov, Adbiyas Gol Tzadak. Okay, we're going to speak a little bit about Tubishvat. It's very interesting. In the whole Shulchan Aruch, what does the Shulchan Aruch say to do on Tubishvat? Nothing. Nothing is mentioned in Shulchan Aruch of what to do on Tubishvat. In fact, the whole Tu B'Shvat is only mentioned two times in the whole Shulchan Aruch. One in Simon Kuf Lamed Aleph, he says, don't say Tachanun on, on Tu B'Shvat. Then he talks about if somebody fasts every Monday and Thursday, what happens if it comes out on Tu B'Shvat? That's the entire mention of Tu B'Shvat. How many fruits should you eat? He doesn't say. What kind of fruits should you eat? He doesn't say. The minhag of eating fruits is not brought down, not in Shulchan Aruch, not in Ramah, not in... Anywhere, except Magen Avram says, Noagim ha'ashkenazim le'echol perot. The Ashkenazim eat fruit. What do the Sephardim eat? Couscous, no. It doesn't say. It's not brought down. Nothing, nothing. However, we know that uh, nowadays, certainly the, the Sephardic post can also bring down the custom of eating fruits on Tu B'Shvat. So the first question we have to ask ourselves is, why should you eat fruits on Tu B'Shvat? Say, well, what do you mean? It's Rosh Hashanah Le'ilanot. Now, do you know what it means, Rosh Hashanah Le'ilanot? Many people have a mistake. They think the fruits are, the, are judged on Tu B'Shvat. The fruits are not judged on Tu B'Shvat. Pesach is the day of judgment for the fruits. When we say Tu B'Shvat is Rosh Hashanah Le'ilanot, it's for Hilchot Ma'aser. That whatever fruit grew before Tu B'Shvat is last year's produce. Whatever grows... After Tu B'Shvat is this year's, and you're now to take off this year's Maser from last year's Maser. So what's the Yom Tov? It's just a line of demarcation. It's like tax season. It's basically, it's April 15th. That's what it is. Does anybody uh, skip Tachanun on April 15th? People fast on April 15th. <laughs> Nobody skips Tachanun on tax day. So Tu B'Shvat is basically tax day. Pay up all your ma'aser from last year. Now begins the new cycle of ma'aser. It's not a day of judgment. It's a day of a demarcation. Nobody celebrates echad be'elul. Is Rosh Hashanah le'ma'aser behema. So whatever cows were born last year, you take off the ma'aser from last year's cows. Whatever cows are born this year, you take off the ma'aser from this year's cows. But it's not a Yom Tov. What exactly do you celebrate on Tu B'Shvat? What are you so happy about? Why do you omit the tachanun? That's the big question. Another question is why should you eat fruits? On Sukkot we're judged on Mayim. <coughs> uh, you know anybody who drinks water on, on Sukkot? On Shavuot we're judged on grain. You know anybody who eats wheat on Shavuot? On Pesach we're judged on fruit. Nobody eats fruit on Pesach. Oh, Tu B'Shvat is the, a day of demarcation for the fruit. So, well, so why should we eat fruit? That's the big question. So, Rabbi we begin with the Mishnah in the beginning of Masechta Rosh Hashanah. So, actually, according to Beit Shammai, Tu B'Shvat is not even the line of demarcation. We know Beit Shammai holds what? Echad B'Shvat. So the Mishnah says like this, Be'echad B'Shvat Rosh Hashanah La'ilan. On the first day of Shvat is Rosh Hashanah for a tree. Kedivrei Beit Shammai. Beis Hillel Oimrim, Bachamisha Asar Bai. Beis says on the 15th. Tonight's shiur is going to be about not one word, one letter in the Mishnah. 
There's an extra letter in the Mishnah. Who, let's see who could identify the extra letter in this Mishnah. The Mishnah says, so the million dollar question is Anybody find the extra letter? Which one? Kaf Who said Kaf? Raise your hand if you said Kaf The extra letter is the Kaf The Mishnah should say Rosh Hashanah Li'ilan Divrei Beishamai What's Kid Divrei Beishamai? We never say kid divrei, we always say divrei. Divrei Rabbi Meir, divrei Rabbi Lazar, divrei Rabbi Tarfan. What's kid divrei Beishamai? You know what kid divrei sounds like? This is consistent with everything Beishamai ever said. The first day of Shvat, this is in accordance with everything. In accord, kid divrei Beishamai. Like the, the opinion of Beishamai. What's kid divrei Beishamai? Who asked this question? The great... B'nai Yisachar. Also his descendant, the Admar of Kloisenberg. The Kloisenberg Rebbe asked this question. What's Ki Divrei Beit Shammai? Okay, Rebbe Tai, fasten your seatbelts. We have a machloket. When was the world created? What are the two opinions? Who remembers? What are the two options? Either Be'echad B'tishrei Rosh Hashanah or Be'echad Benisan. Who holds what? If you look at number four, the Gemara brings Rabbi Lazar Oimer, Betishrei Nivraha Olam, Betishrei Nolduha Avot, Betishrei Meitu Avot. So the Rabbi Lazar is of the opinion in Tishrei the world was created, in Tishrei the Avos were born, in Tishrei the Avos died, in Tishrei Yosef got out of jail, in on Rosh Hashanah the Avoda in Mitzrayim stopped. Benisan Nigalu, we were redeemed in Nisan. Betishrei Asidin Ligael. You ever hear that? Betishrei Asidin Ligael. That's the opinion of Rabbi Lazar. If you hold the world was created in Tishrei, then we're going to be redeemed in Tishrei. Comes Rabbi Yehoshua, Benisan Nivraha Olam. Benisan Al Duavot. Benisan Meit Duavot. Benisan. Nigalu benisan atidin ligael. So we have a machloikas. When's Mashiach? Okay, so the first machloikas is when was the world created? Rabbi Lezer says Rosh Hashanah, and Rabbi Yeshua says Be'echad benisan. But by the way, this is not a halachic dispute. This is not a halachic dispute. You would say, if I would ask you, who do we paskin like? Say, there's no psak, it's not halacha. But nevertheless, there's a rule. Rabbi, Yeshua, Rabbi Eleazar and Rabbi Yeshua, we always paskin like Rabbi Yeshua. So that means we paskin benisan nivraha olam, and we paskin benisan asidin ligael. Okay, so we're coming up on the chodesh nisan. So you know, Mashiach is getting closer. Benisan asidin ligael. But so we have a very important machlokas. Rabbi Eleazar says the world was created in Tishrei. Mashiach will come in Tishrei. Rabbi Yeshua says the world was created in Nisan. Mashiach will come in Nisan. Comes the great Bnei Yisachar. And he says, well, if the world was created by Tishrei, what does it mean the world? What, the, what world? Man was created by Echad Tishrei. Yeah? So when was the, the first day of creation? The week before. The week before. Chaf Elul. Okay? Or if you say Benisan Nivra Olam, then when did God say Vayom Elokim Yihiar? Bechav Hey Adar. Okay, so we have we have a, a machloket. What was the first day of creation? Rabbi Yeshua says Chav Hey Adar, and Rabbi Lazar says Chav Hey Elo. Okay, we have another principle. Raise your hand if you're married. Okay. Hopefully. Okay, some people are are willing to admit. <laughs> 40 days before you were formed, there was a heavenly voice. We all know about the, the bas call, the bat call. Does it do anything for you if I speak Bahavar Sfaradit or it doesn't make a difference? We'll go back and forth, you know. This way, what? Chasidish. The bas call cries out 40 days before you're formed, bas ploini leploini. Him to her. 
God's already being mezavig, the zivug, how many days before you're formed? 40 days. Which really means at the time of conception. Because it takes 40 days until the embryo is formed. At day 40, the embryo is formed. The gender is determined on day 40. A person is formed on day 40. Which means at conception, 40 days earlier, at the time of conception, it's indetermined the, the future of the fetus. It, it's only determined on day 40. So at conception, 40 days earlier, God says him to her. Okay? Bas Polin What do we see from this Gemara? That 40 days before something comes to be, it's conceived. 40 days before something is created, God plans it. 40 days before the embryo is formed, God says him to her. Okay, so that's an idea that 40 days before God does something, He plans it. So if the first day of creation is Chaf Hei Elul, when did God think of the idea to create the world? 40 days before Chaf Hei Elul. What's 40 days before Chaf Hei Elul? Well, take you 30 days is Chaf Hei Av. 40 days is Tuba'av. 40 days is Tuba'av. In other words, if the first day of creation is the 25th day of Elul, then 40 days before, God said, you know what? I think it's a good idea to create the world. Now we understand why Tuba'av is the day of to be Mezavek Zivugim. Why? Because that's the day that God had the idea to be Mezavek, the world, on the, for the sake of the Jewish people. God created the world for Klal Yisrael, so that He could unite with us. So when was the Shidduch between us and God made? Tuba'av. That's why Tuba'av is the day of Zivugim, because the ultimate Zivug for the creation of the world was on Tuba'av. You say, but what do you mean? But in Lakewood they open up the freezer on Tubashvat. That's when the guys start going out. That's because we hold like Rabbi Hoshua, that the world was created in Nisan. So the first day of creation was Chafei Adar. So the day that God decided to create the world was Tu B'Shvat. So if you want to know the significance of Tu B'Shvat, that is when it entered the mind of God to create the world. According to Rabbi Lezer, on Tu Ba'av. According to Rabbi Yeshua, Tu B'Shvat. Now we know why Tu B'Shvat is something like a Yom Tov. In other words, Rosh Hashanah is a Yom Tov. God created man. But the real Yom Tov is when God thought to create man. Which is when? Tu B'Shvat. Or Tu Ba'av. Okay? Friends, we're just getting started. Okay? So this is, this is the two tracks of the creation of the world. There's Tu Ba'av, conception. Chaf Elul, creating light. Rosh Hashanah creating man according to Rabbi Eliezer. According to Rabbi Hoshua, God conceived the idea to create the world on Tu B'Shvat. He said, Yehi are on Chaf Adar, and He created man on Rosh Chodesh Nisan. Okay? Fine. So what does this have to do with Beishamai? There's a statement in Shas, Rabbi Eliezer, who says the world was created in Tishrei. He's Shamuti. Shamuti. You ever hear that expression? Rabbi Lezer, Shamuti. Simply it means he was put in Cherem. Rabbi Lezer, Ben Horkinos, was put in Cherem. He was too assertive. He disagreed with the Chachamim. They put him in Cherem. But the Yushalmi says Shamuti means he's a Shammai man. He's a student of Shammai. Everything he says is in accordance with Shammai. Rabbi Lezer was a student of Shammai. When do you think Be Shammai would say God created the world? Betishrei or Benisan? So now we have to think for a moment. We know that Be Shammai is Midas Hadin, the strict letter of the law. Beis Hillel is Midas Harachman. If God created the world in Tishrei, Tishrei is the day that God judges the world. It's a day of judgment. It's a day of Mdin, Midas Hadin. It's a day of strict justice. Beishamai would say, Midas Hadin Hashem created the world. God created the world on the first day of Tishrei. Midas Hadin. Bereishis bara Elokim. Midas Hadin. Balaturim says Bereishis could be unscrambled. Aleph, Tishrei. 
Bereshis Aleph Petishrei. Beishamai says God created the world Aleph Petishrei. Beishillah would say no way. Beishillah would say no way. Beishillah would say God created the world in Nisan. In Nisan, there's no Midas Hadin. There's no Rosh Hashanah in Nisan. When we needed to get out of Egypt, when did God take us out of Egypt? We never would have left Egypt in a million years on Rosh Hashanah. God would have judged us, and that's it. He, he would have sold, we serve Avodah Zarah, we never would get out. In Nisan, God says, no problem. Your 49th level of Tumah, your Aram the Arya, you're naked and bare of mitzvot, you have no mitzvot. Don't worry, I give you a freebie. I have Rachamim on you. Nisan is the month of Rachamim. Beis Hillel says that God created the world Be'echad Nisan. You ready for this? Rabbi Eliezer is a Shammai man. Rabbi Eliezer holds of Midas Hadin. So Rabbi Eliezer would hold that the world was created when? Tishrei. Okay? Forty days before is Tubav, right? Chafhe Elo, forty days before Tubav. If you would say to Rebbe Lezer, is there something called Tu B'Shvat? say, I never heard of Tu B'Shvat. What's Tu B'Shvat? Tu B'Shvat is meaningless. I'm a Shammai man. I'm a Tishrei man. If you want anything about Shvat, it's Rosh Chodesh Shvat. Kid Divrei Beit Shammai. In accordance with Beit Shammai Shita in general, that the world was created by Midas Hadin. That's why it says, Rebbe Lezer Oimer, Be... Rebbe, um, excuse me? Kid Divrei Beit Shammai. Be'echad b'shvat Rosh Hashanah Lilan Kedivrei Be'i Shammai Because according to Rabbi Eleazar and according to Be'i Shammai There is no significance to Tu B'shvat What's Tu B'shvat? Tu B'shvat only makes sense if God created the world Be'echad Ben Nisan Comes Be'i Hillel Be'i Hillel says I say God created the world B'midas Harachamim And if He created the world B'midas Harachamim He created it Be'echad Be'i Nisan And that means the first day of creation was Chafhei Adar. And that means 40 days before Chafhe Adar is Tuba'av. Therefore, base Tubashvat. Therefore, base Hilaloimrim, Bechamisha Asar Bishvat. The Machloikes, Be Shamay and Beis Hillel is completely dependent on when God created the world. Beis Hillel says God created the world Berachamim. Therefore, the first day of creation was Chafhe Adar. 40 days before is Tubashvat. However, Beishamai says, Bechamisha Asar, Beishamai says, Rosh Chodesh Shvat, there's no such thing as Tu B'Shvat. Tu B'Shvat is in the world of Rabbi Yehoshua, but I hold the world was created in Tishrei. Okay? Let's take it one more step. We said there's a Machloikis when God created the world. Did He create the world in Nisan or in Tishrei? When's Mashiach coming? In which month? Tishrei? Or Nisan. 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 Rabbi Yoshua would say the world was created in Nisan. Benisan nivra haolam. Benisan nigalu avoteinu mi mitzrayim. Uvenisan asidin ligael. What would Rabbi Eliezer say? Mashiach is coming. Rabbi Eliezer says, Be tishrei nivra haolam. Benisan nigalu avoteinu. Uve tishrei atidin ligael. Who do we hold like? Rabbi Yoshua. Which means the Geula will come when? Nisan. Nisan. If the Geula will come in Nisan, when will be like the first step of the Geula? Well, if, if the beginning of the Geula is Rosh Chodesh Nisan, but the preliminary step will be Chavhe Adar. Okay? When will it arise in the mind of Hashem? You know, I think it's a good idea to bring Geula. 40 days before. Tu B'Shvat. If you want to know why Tu B'Shvat is a Yom Tov, it's because it's the day, it's Ya'ale Bedas Elyon Ligal Es Yisrael. According to Rabbi Yehoshua, it's Tu B'Shvat. According to Rabbi Lezer, it's Tu Ba'av. Now there's another amazing machloket between Rabbi Lezer and Rabbi Yeshua. Do we need to do Teshuvah for Mashiach to come? Rabbi Lezer says, well, I'll ask you a little trivia. Who says, Ein Yisrael Nigalin Ela B'tshuva? Who do you think would say that? And who do you think would say, Yisrael Nigalin Afim Loa Asu Tshuva? 
Rabbi Yeshua holds we don't have to do teshuva for Geulah to come. Rabbi Elezer holds Ein Yisrael Nigalin Ela B'Tshuva. It's a separate machlokas. Take a look in number 12. In number... Let's see if we can find it. It's a Gemara in Sanhedrin. No, look at number 24. Gemara says, Rabbi Elezer Oimer, Im Yisrael Osin Tshuva Nigalin V'im Lav Ein Nigalin. So many Svarim write. Rabbi Eleazar is going l'shitase. Rabbi Eleazar, who holds the world was created in Tishrei, and the Geula will happen in Tishrei. What's Tishrei? Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Hoshana Rabbah, the month of Teshuvah. Ein Yisrael nigalim ela b'teshuvah. That's why Rabbi Eleazar holds the world was created in Tishrei. The Geula will happen in Tishrei, and therefore Ein Yisrael nigalim ela b'teshuvah. But Rabbi Yeshua holds. The world is created in Nisan. And we're going to be redeemed in Nisan. Now question. When the Jews left Egypt, we did Teshuvah? No. We had mitzvot? No. We were on a high level? We were about to sink to the abyss. If we would have been there a second longer, we would have fallen to the point of no return. So why did God redeem us? Rachamim gemurim. What does Pesach mean? Rashi says, Ufasachti chamalti, Rashi says. Pesach is Rachamim, Nisan is Rachamim. So according to Rabbi Yeshua, Geula will happen? Berachamim, what month? Nisan, this is Tzadik, what's your name? Zohar. Zohar, you're my neighbor. Yeah? Bezrat Hashem. Alright. I only live next to people named Zohar. <laughs> what? Yeah. According to, according to Rabbi Yeshua, we don't need Teshuvah for Geula. And therefore Geula will happen in Nisan because Nisan is the month of Rachamim without Teshuvah. So if Geula will happen in Rosh Chodesh Nisan and God will start preparing the Geula, Chofhei Adar, what is the most merciful day of the year where it arises in the mind of Kiviyachal Das Elyon? You know, I think I should redeem the Jewish people Berachamim. Tu B'Shvat. Tu is the day it arises in Hashem's mind to redeem the Jewish people, Barachana. So he said, what does it got to do with the fruits? This is, this is a gift from heaven. You ready? This is beautiful. Does anybody, obviously, you know, we're not, nobody knows when Mashiach is coming, but the Gemara says, what is the clearest symbol and sign from the heavens that the... the uh, Geula is coming. The Gemara says, "Ein lecha keitz megula mize." It's Gemara in Sanhedrin Daf Tzadikas. Rabbi Eliezer va'amar Rabbi Abba, "Ein lecha keitz megula mize." Shenemar viatem hare Yisrael anifchem titenu upiriyachem tisu laami Yisrael. When fruit, what? It's number twenty. When fruits grow in the land of Israel, that is the clearest sign Mashiach is coming. Throughout our history, you know, if you ever read the article of Mark Twain, he writes about his uh, travels through Palestine. He talks about how dreary, how desolate, everybody knows, until 1948, it was swampland, it was ridden with malaria, nothing grew anywhere. When the Arabs were on the land for a thousand years, it was the most barren, desolate, despondent, despicable place. And all of a sudden the Jewish people come and it starts flourishing and it starts growing because the land of Israel needs the people of Israel to flourish. The Gemara says, Ein lecha keitz megula mizeh. There's no clearer sign of Mashiach than the delicious fruits of Israel. In fact, we have many Gemarot. The Gemara says that Rav Huna was eating a fruit and his son, Rabba, said, Wow, the fruit, that fruit smells very good. That's, that fruit, really, it smells very good. So Rav Huna said, Tahara yeshbecha. You're very tahar. You're very tahar. The Gemara explains that from the day the temple was destroyed, the purity and the lusciousness and the deliciousness of fruit ended. Mishachar beit hamikdash, batla tamperot. Fruits don't taste the same way they used to. 
We don't enjoy the same taste that fruits had. But when Mashiach comes, fruits will gain a much more delicious, flavorful taste. It's very interesting. Chazal tell us that Asidin Laasos Ilani Srak Asidin Laasor Perot. When Mashiach comes, even maple trees, even oak trees will give fruit. Right now, you know, you have fruit trees and you have non fruit trees. When Mashiach comes, even barren trees will produce fruit. There's a very strong connection between Geula and the blossoming of fruit. Fruit is the strongest premonition that Mashiach is coming. In fact, there's a certain flavor you could taste in fruit. If the base of English is destroyed, the flavor is lost. When the gula is happening, there's a certain flavor that is going to come back. Rav Shlomo Azam and Orbach says, since the Gemara tells us that when the base of English was destroyed, the taste and the purity of fruit ended, when we make a blessing after fruit, we say in the Al HaMichi Al HaEitz, Ve Al we say, Ve HaAleinu Letocha, Ve Samcheinu Vinyana, Ve Nocham Priya, Ve Nizba Mi Tuva, U Nivarechecha Aleha, Ve Kedusha, Uv Tahara. That when Mashiach comes and when we return to Yushalayim, the purity of the fruit will be restored. We don't say anything about Tahara in Berchad HaMazon. Because there's no lack of tahara in bread. But there's a lack of tahara in perot. The, the tahara of perot was diminished with the destruction of the base of You know, I was thinking, you know, my house, we have young kids. Do kids eat fruits? No. They don't know what a fruit is. They, don't, they never heard of a fruit. They don't even know what it is. They see an orange thing. You know? They, they, don't, they don't know. But my grandparents... They eat fruits. They only ate fruits, right? Dessert was a fruit. You give a kid a fruit, he doesn't know what to do with it. He doesn't know how to hold it. He doesn't know what bracha it is. He doesn't know if it's living, it's a chai, a medaber, a tzomeach. Why? Because in earlier generations, they had more tahara. So they, had, they were able to taste a closer taste of the fruit to the way fruits used to be, so at least they still had a connection, appreciation for fruits. Nowadays, we're so distant from the tahara of fruits, so the kid has to eat gushers and fruity pebbles. <laughs> but he can't eat a fruit. There's nothing, he said, what, it doesn't taste like anything. Right? Yet my grandparents, so delicious, the fruit. It's so, right? Why? Yeridad hadorot, you see it in achilat perot. This is an open Gemara. Barech aleinu Hashem alkenos hashana hazot ve'et. Soon I'm going to know your nusach. Ve'ez kovni. Terachim tzion, right? Not filu shalayim. Echadara. Tenavach. What comes after Barech aleinu? Tekah b'shofar gadol. The Gemara asks, why does Tekah b'shofar come right after Barech aleinu? Because after God blesses us with luscious fruits, that's when Tika Bishofra Gadal Khirut Gamar Megillah. The coming of the fruits, the taste of the fruits, the proliferation of the fruits, the flavor of the fruits. When the base of Israel was destroyed, we lost flavor. When Rav Huna tasted a fruit, when Rav Huna tasted a fruit, and Rabbah said, That smells good, Rav Huna said, Wow, you have the purity of the Beit HaMikdash. So in other words, if somebody was, let's say, anticipating Geula, where would he be like checking? You know, if somebody was anticipating and yearning and aspiring for Geula, where would he be searching for it? He's checking out the fruits. He's tasting the fruits. Does it taste the same as last year or is there like an enhanced flavor this year? Does the fruit have more tahara? Does the fruit have, feel, taste like more kedusha? What day of the year does it arise in the mind of HaKadosh Baruch Hu to redeem the Jewish people? Well, we paskin like Rabbi Hoshua, Benisa Nasidin Ligayel, which means the first day of Geula Chafhei Adar, which means 40 days before that it arises in Hashem's mind to redeem the Jewish people, Tu B'Shvat. So on Tu B'Shvat, we're already yearning for Geula. We're thinking about it, we're dreaming about it. So we're going to pick up those fruits and we're going to imagine the enhanced flavor. The rest of the year people look at a buxer. What, what do you do with buxer? It's like you play drums with it. I mean, honestly, I don't know any human being who, actually, who ate a buxer. It's like eating the table. 
On Tu B'Shvat, all of a sudden, Buxer, it's delicious, it's very sweet. Carob. For Ashkenazah, Yiddish, Buxer, what do you call it? Ka- Charuvim. <laughs> the rest of the year, a Te'ina, a Tamar, nobody has... Uh, by the way, your Tamar, you got to slice it open. You got to make sure there are no Tola'im in the Tamar. Because that's not good. You don't want to eat worms. Even though they're high in protein, each worm is many, many lavim. You got to open it up. Tam- tamarim, te'inim, you got to check. A lot of fruits, they have to be uh, checked for tola'im. But what's the connection to eating fruits on Tu B'Shvat? The connection is very clear. The clearest premonition that the gula is coming is detected in the the savory flavor of a fruit, and therefore we taste the fruit, it's a way of being mispalel, it's a way of praying, it's a way for, of yearning, it's a way of aspiring for the coming of Geula. I'll end off with Remez Nifla, out of this world. Tetu B'Shvat, Besov HaTorah. So it comes out that Tishrei, you know, Tishrei is a hard month, we're sweating the whole Tishrei. Some people even say slichot, 40 days before, you know. Because you have to do a lot of teshuvah. To get anything accomplished in Tishrei, you need teshuvah. It's, it's the time of the year of which Tana? Rebbe Eliezer, who goes like Beit Shammai. It's Midar Hadin. You want to accomplish something, you need teshuvah. This time of the year, you know, you lean back a little bit, you could unbutton a little bit. You don't need teshuvah. You're somech an racha me shamayim. We don't Yisrael nigalim afim lo osim teshuva. You could be Eirom, you could be Arya, you could be memtesh arei tuma. You could rely on racha me shamayim. Ready for this? You look at the parshiot at the end of the Torah. Vayela, how many psukim? Very short. How many psukim in Vayela? Thirty. Nitzavim, how many psukim? 40. Ha'azinu, how many psukim? 52. You ready for this? Says the great tzaddik, Rav Moshe Wolfson. There are different types of teshuvah. Big tzaddikim, they start Rosh Chodesh Elul. 30 days later, Rosh Hashanah, they wrap it up. They're nechtavim, nechtamim, lechayim tovim. And they're done. They don't need anything else. That's Parshas Vayelech. 30 days and call it a day. Some people, they take a little bit longer. They take another 10 days. They need Yom Kippur. 40 days. That's Parshat Nitzavim. That's Parshat Nitzavim. 40 days. Those are the Beinonim. Those are, they can't do Tshuva only in 30 days. They need 40 days. So they're Tshuva. They need Parshat Nitzavim. 40 days of Tshuva. Then you have people, it takes them a little bit more time. They need Sukkot. They need Hoshana Rabbah. They need Shmini Atzeret. How many days from Rosh Chodesh Elul to the 22nd day of Tishrei? Shmini Atzeret? 52 days. That's Parshat Ha'azinu. Those, so if you can't do it in Vayelech 30 days, you can't do it in Nitzavim 40 days, and you can't, then you have Ha'azinu 52 days. By the way, Rav Moshe Wolfson said he told his son-in-law, the Stachina Rebbe, and the Stachina Rebbe said, well, 30 Plus 40, plus 52, is 122. Kitavo is also 122. Now, what's 122? What if you can't do Teshuvah in 30 days? And you can't do in 40 days? And you can't do in 50 days? If you add 52. If you add 30, 40, and 52, that's 122. 122 days from Rosh Chodesh Elul? Zot Chanukah. Okay? So you have 30 days, you try to do it by Rosh Hashanah. 40 days, you try to do it by Yom Kippur. 52, Hoshana Rabbah. If you can't do it then, you have Kitavo. You have 30, 40, 52. 30 plus 40 plus 52 is 122. Zot Chanukah. That gets you, by the way, the end of Kitavo, the end of Ha'azinu. What's the end of Ha'azinu? Is um, Vizos Habracha? Vizos, Zos Chanukah. Okay, so here's the million dollar question. 
What do you do with Parshat Vezot HaBracha? You have 30 in Vayelech, 40 in Nitzavim, 52 in Ha'azinu, 122 in Kitavo. You have 41 Pesukim in Vezot HaBracha. Doesn't fit in. Doesn't go. So Rav Moshe Wolfson said, don't worry about Vezot HaBracha. You don't read it on Shabbat. So it doesn't count. So you have Vayelech is 30, Nitzavim is 40, Ha'azinu 52, and then you add them all together, Zot Chanukah. You have different options of tshuva. 30 days from Rosh Hashanah till, from Rosh Chodesh El to Rosh Hashanah, 40 days till Yom Kippur, 52 till Shemini Atzeret, and 122 till Zot Chanukah. So Bezchutchem, Hashem gave me Matana Tova. I say, Vizot HaBracha is very important. Because Vizot HaBracha has 41 Pesukim. So if you count 41 days from Zot Chanukah, it gets you to two Bishvat. So if you can't do Teshuvah by Rosh Hashanah, and you can't do Teshuvah by Yom Kippur, and you can't do it by Shemini Atzeret, and you can't even do like Sifrei Chasidot say Zot Chanukah, so what are you supposed to do? There are no other options. There's one more option. You only have to do Teshuvah in the world of Rabbi Eliezer, in the Tishrei world. In the world of Rabbi Eliezer, that the world was created Bedin, and the Gula will happen Bedin, you got to do Teshuvah, so you got to worry about Rosh Hashanah, you got to worry about Yom Kippur, you got to worry about Shemini Atzeret, you got to worry about Zod Chanukah. But luckily, we don't paskin like Rabbi, Hoshu, or like Rabbi Eliezer. We paskin like Rabbi Hoshua. Benisa Nivra Ha'olam. Benisa Nasidin Ligael. And if Benisa Nasidin Ligael, then the first day of Geula is Chaf Adar. And if the first day of Geula is Chaf Adar, then the first day that God thinks about Geula is Tu B'Shvat. So if you still haven't done Teshuvah yet, on Tu B'Shvat, you could await and anticipate and hope for Racham Shamayim. And the Rachamei Shamayim is that even if we're not Zocheh, and you're Erom Ve'eria, and you're Memtesh Sharei Tumah, HaKadosh Baruch Hu will drag you out, provided you with the program. And when you eat the fruits, Ein Lecha Keitz Megula Mizeh, we hope, we pick up the fruit, and we hope to taste, and to savor, and to feel, and to be Margish, the Tahara, the coming of the Geula. And with that we hope, it ushers in a new period of the year, a period of simcha, of the Yemei Purim that help us prepare for Pesach, Be'ezrat Hashem. We should all be zoche, Be'tu Bishvat, Allah, Be'dat HaMakom, Ligo Aleinu, B'mher V'yaminu, Amen. Baruch Tiyah. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.